All right, well, welcome, welcome everyone to another game here. We've got Amir in with us as we're going to be reviewing some my gameplay uh, by being probably one of the like most like hot topic picks right now, I believe in NA, uh, possibly even in KR for like a lot of the tournament play, correct? Yeah, ERM saw, I think there was a lobby with six my teams and I'm pretty sure that there was only one my team that fell below the other teams that weren't running my and like this character has just been so strong her damage output is very high her utility is so high especially running quake 3 is allowed to kind of walk around fights and with the influx of adcs since the beginning of season this character's like her value is just shot up with the fact that she can press w and reduce auto attack damage to one and then she can press R and give that to any of her allies. Right, yeah, that's the other factor. You're absolutely right. I never even considered that. Like, I know that Mai has been really strong and, like, been seen a lot recently. Like, I mean, come on, like, six teams running her? That's crazy. But, yeah, the fact that ADCs have become really prominent and are showing up everywhere is... I mean, ADCs are really strong to be on your team with Mai, as well as, like, be facing when you're Mai. So yeah, it's just she's just double dipping all over for the for the meta. Yeah, and then on top of all of that, we have the Mai exclusive items. A lot of people don't know, but Mai's myth chess piece, the myth crop top, has 51 armor on it. Which that that is the highest armor piece that we have in game. It just does not feel fair. Yeah, that's actually some like crazy stats. And you know what's crazy? I don't even see it be built that much. Like most times, Mai's are running the the blazing uh, jacket, and like most times, I I don't even see like the bruisers that are on her team like pick it up and like swap to the myth crab. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure that her upgrade on chest piece. Um, I'd have to double check, get it correct, but I think it does. 4% of your max HP is damage around you, which that like that just equals a lot of damage at the end of the day, especially for a character like Mai, who her entire thing is she kind of sits on you and sticks on you the entire time in a fight. Her Q allows her to slow you, her E is dash that is targeted, and then after that she gets a taunt, she runs quake, so like yeah. she's able to just sit on you even longer, and then like, what are you supposed to do against her? No, exactly. Plus, also, speaking of uh, Quake, so right now there's a lot of different, like, decisions that some Mai's are doing. Uh, there are some Mai's that just don't level up Quake at all, and they save for Force Core early and get, like, a Force Core upgrade for the team. There is Mai's, as we're seeing here, where they've gotten Quake level 2 already, which means that they're probably going first by tax skill and getting Quake 3 for the extra damage. Um, there is also, I know a lot of my players ever since the small buff that Commander's headset got, uh, have been going for a Meteor Rush early game if they have an ADC on the team, because Commander's headset's actually a pretty good item. Um, being able to give someone, like, CC someone in any way, being a slow, a taunt, a root, any, so, any, any sort of movement impairing effect, and then giving your ADC bonus damage to someone and a small heal attached every time they auto attack that target. That's just a, it's a very strong item. Wait, that's kind of cooking. Wait, I have yet, wait, I have never seen that tech, but on paper, that tech sounds incredible. I actually really like that. Like what? That's actually really cool. Yeah, I think it's an item that needs a bit more, uh, a bit more play from a lot of players. Like. I know I see Lenny players building it when they have an ADC on the team. Yeah. It gives you a lot more beefiness, especially as the Lenny if you want to W forward. Um, I know some Johan players as well, just because your headpiece slot on a lot of these supportive characters or some of these tanky characters can kind of be a flex slot, okay. as long as you're able to fit CDR into like your arm or weapon like or boots a lot of the time. Um, the only thing is, for teams that are running my, uh, sadly, a support isn't your best your best selection because my still has yet to get a support chess piece upgrade. Oh my god, imagine a support elf dress upgrade. Oh my gosh. I think I'd have to be locking in my every game. And maybe Mize would even build it themselves, being able to E their ally and give them the shield for the bonus. That would be crazy. 
That would be some uh, some crazy <laughs> tech, but I, <laughs> I don't know if it would be too useful. Well, who knows? But also, to talk about here, uh, with Mai specifically, you can notice right now in her inventory, she's actually... She's got four wards. I believe uh, two of those are from logistics, but she's also got five uh, binoculars. And I don't know if you noticed, but she just crafted the tactical ops helmet. This, so the, yeah. one of the reasons why we looked at this game specifically to grab was because this Mai ends up using tac ops helmet. I don't know when she swaps to this off of her Mohawk headgear. I'm going to assume it's when she gets pauldron. So she has reflection still, but she, she intentionally did this. It's not a random item. She crafted this. <laughs> That is, I, you know, I thought, you know, maybe she just picked it up off of a body. You know, there's just a player that she saw have it and was like, maybe we just need this item. But the fact that it's intentional, she crafts it herself and we eventually actually use the item. I wonder, like, is it what of Lenny? is the... It's probably because of Lenny, right? They d maybe she thinks they need more damage on the team. Maybe like that. It does bring you a decent amount of damage with the passive that it has, plus the fact that Mai's auto attacks deal damage based off her defense. So if the rest of your build already has a decent amount of defense, then we're able to see a lot of damage come out through our auto attack. And yeah, we will be getting the tack three this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which makes sense. If you're not if you're not rushing tack three, then you're just not leveling up quake is usually the game plan. Uh, oh, I don't know if I mentioned it. The reason why it's really important to mention that this Mai has all these bin uh, bin telegraphic uh, binoculars as well uh, in her inventory is because Mai's E allows her to jump two wards to be able to gap close onto enemies easier. Yeah, I think the fact that this Mai player went, I think it was their first zone because I think they started factory. They grabbed so many binoculars that for the rest of the game, they should have cameras. But also, we're just walking forward and not caring because we're versing a team with three auto attackers. The ult badly coming out a bit late, though. Yeah, unfortunate there. Maybe Katja does counter my. Every few bullets that you don't block just does so much damage. Yeah, it's very possible, but I don't think so. I feel like my should still be able to win that. I think they just need their power spikes, right? Because. No way, have never mind. Uh, we have our power spikes. What the heck? Oh, um, Aya gets you know, four <laughs> items. Oh, also, our Aya just doesn't like my, I guess. Um, we're actually seeing the Spectre coming out for the Aya instead of going for uh, for the my chest piece. Yeah, which is really unfortunate because that Meteor could have went to something on like my or Lenny and then she could have gotten a four score chest piece that's better. Yeah, that... You know, I think it's just a, a thing of she wants the crit. I know a lot of ADC players keep going back and forth on whether or not they like Spectre or they like a different chess piece. Um, because most ADCs are running Tuxedo currently. And Tuxedo is an item that gives you both attack speed and crit. And there is no upgrade. And there is no my upgrade as well that gives you crit. Um, well, there's no, yeah, there's no my upgrade that gives you crit. And... Mai's chess peak upgrade for a lot of ADCs gives, I think it's 20% attack speed. So a lot of them are still slightly off their preferred like 30 or 40% attack speed upgrade. Right. Yeah, and that, but, yeah, I mean, that's that, yeah, that is definitely a big factor there. And I know, um, gosh, I forget what item you just, you were just talking about and I completely like drew a blank on it because I wanted to <laughs> comment on it and I, completely forget which one it was i believe it was one of the chests uh, I, whatever it doesn't matter anymore i completely forget about it but yeah there was one of the items was like you know it does differ based on like if you want the like max crit chance or not oh yeah with uh specter a lot of the times people prefer to run it for the 100 percent crit chance because they're running a crit arm and a set of crit boots so with a crit chest piece it brings them up to 100 percent but Personally, I'm a fan of just running two crit items for the 67% crit chance because then every other auto is a critical strike and this fight is actually going not too well for us. Wait, wait, okay, but no, but like that actually, that's crazy. Wait a second, that fight was looking so bad and we, we didn't even use exclusive on Aya. We just let Aya figure it out and we turned that. What? That was pretty massive. Alongside, oh, <laughs> the body or the box is more important than finding the bodies. 
I mean, um, I, I, I knew that fight was immediately going to turn the second that they were all bunched up on these stairs. Mai just had the freest re-engaged taunt ever as soon as Aya survived that initial, like, jump. And it was kind of massive seeing the Lenny heal come over to the Aya. Like, I thought Aya was supposed to be on the floor a while ago, and then Lenny just keeps healing and healing, and then Aya was full HP, and Mai's allowed to start playing the game how she wants again. Yeah, absolutely disgusting. That was, uh, that was crazy, huh? Plus, we got the exclusive out on ourselves, making sure we don't die to the final Kacha Q that came out, which I think would have been just enough damage to put us onto the floor. Oh no, we're gonna lose the box? Wait. Oh, the taunt coming out, denying them the ability to grab the box as well. And then we're pulling the... I think that was our Aya getting pulled out. Yeah, yeah, I got pulled away from the Yuki, but it's just not gonna be enough. Oh my god, this looks like it's gonna be a white. Oh, the, the ward hop at the last second. Yeah, I, a lot of players, myself included, are still not the biggest fan of using my ward hop just because it feels slightly off. But I think if you're ever, ever able to get this ability to feel good, then being able to ward hop on any character is just so okay. useful. Yeah, so I struggled with this for a long... My God, this is stressing me out. We're one oh HP. Oh my God, man. Okay. Uh, another uh, team coming in to do okay. this as well. I okay. Look, we 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 know the outcome of this game before coming into it. Okay, because we have to find the game. But yeah. I swear to God, I was nail biting. I thought this Maya was dead. I was like, did I grab the wrong game? Why is Maya gonna die at team five teams left? This is insane. Like. Holy crap! Uh, that looked like it was supposed to be a wipe, like, five different times. Oh my god. Yeah. Also, uh, a little trick, at least I have learned about ward hopping on my mm -hmm. is... So when you press your ward key, your character will go and, and walk to the destination and then place it. So the most important thing to do is when you press your ward key, you keep your mouse perfectly still, so as soon as the ward goes down, you press E and you'll instantly leap onto it. It's the best way I have found to use it so far. I'm sure there are, okay. uh, I think there's also some mice that will bind it to a mouse button so that they press the mouse button and then they are able to press their key easily. I mean, the thing of keeping your mouse where you press your ward key is probably the best because it allows you to guarantee that your ward is where your mouse is currently going to be and you're not overshooting your E and you're not undershooting it by any amount. Mm -hmm. But it's like our fight with Adri is just very hard. If we're unable to get a taunt onto her, we can't deny her damage. We're at least really good into the Yuki because he is playing... Uh, we're playing against a dual sword Yuki, which means that when he engages on us, we just press W and we don't have to worry about him anymore. Yeah, we just have to, honestly, we have to mostly just taunt the dual sword off of Aya because this is what's going to happen. My gosh, the Lenny with the heals is crazy. I, but uh, I actually think Adri's our least for it because we have Lenny. Uh, dual sword seems like the biggest threat, but uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, with dual sword being able to just remove our Aya from the game like that, I wonder how they play the rest of the fight. Okay. Oh, wait, I didn't even realize we've already swapped off onto the tactical ops. This yeah. is where the damage is coming yeah, from. Yeah, she got the pauldron. She got the she, as soon as she swapped that she swapped off as soon as she bought that pauldron. It's maybe, the, it's the tech. Yeah, maybe this is good tech. You don't need the extra um the extra passive from the headpiece because it's already being used by your arm, so like what better than getting a bit of extra damage? Yeah, exactly. Especially in this kind of team. I, I, I genuinely think, because we, we, we've we seen this, Mai doesn't always do this. I think this was a specific decision because they have Lenny and they have to be that secondary damage dealer to help secure kills if Aya can't get it themselves. Yeah, especially with a lot of the teams in this lobby are very good. Like, they really like to go forward. Like, we have the Dual Sword Yuki. In the game, we still have uh, a Rosie Piolo Dema. That team just wants to be going forward permanently. If your Aya ever falls down to their triple engage, then we need something to keep the fight going. Okay, wait, is this the weapon? This is not the weapon that most mines normally go, is it? Most mines don't even upgrade weapon, but that is a very nice weapon. For my, she gets Bionic 10%? Infusion for a Meteorite versus going a headpiece upgrade that most people would do for I got the name of the headpiece now. Um, Elysian Halo, um, giving our biotic infusion. 
The only issue with this piece, or with this uh, weapon, is that we don't actually get any amp from it. Oh. Yeah, it's attack power. Yeah. And this is a very, it's a very weird item because we don't have an attack power scaling whip character in the game. But we have an attack power whip. Yeah, I, I mean, again, I, I, I genuinely think this is, again, she's... This mine right, understands they have to be a damage dealer, and <laughs> they, have, they have so many damage items. Like this, 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 this is kind of scary, right? This is like percentage HP, percentage HP, percentage HP. And yeah, you have the quake damage on top. You're getting the bonus auto attacks out from having the more attack speed on your headpiece, going for more passive damage. Like, we, we can pump out a lot of damage with this build. All right, I'm waiting for it. Come on, Mai, jump someone and kill him. I want to see this. <laughs> I want to see her just nuke someone here. Oh, I see him. Oh, here's going forward. Oh, that one auto... Wait, Daniel's health is... <laughs> He's already lost, like, 700 HP, and that was my alone. Oh, that's great. I I'm telling you, this is hilarious. <laughs> oh, maybe we can look for something... Can't get the eye as well. And then having the Lenny on your team to guarantee that you're not too worried in a lot of your fights, it just feels so nice. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this Le okay, like I know, I know we're highlighting the my gameplay here, but the Lenny has been so clutch on a lot of these fights in keeping Aya alive. Aya has been in some of the worst areas possible, getting jumped, and um. Uh, the Lenny just does healing wind, the bazooka, the stun, the knockback, and just like fully tries to keep this eye alive constantly. Yeah, this team, normally people would say it's protect the president and we're making sure that Aya is able to stay alive. But at least to me, it looks like our Mai is our dive assassin and then we're playing two backliners. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I think Lenny's on the protect the president duty and Mai's like, they're going to go after my Aya. I'm just going to kill them while they don't think I'm actually going to do damage. Yeah, because if I saw this team comp, I'm I'm thinking, okay, you know, we just kill the Aya and then we're good. And then randomly this Mai will 1v3 the rest of my team. Yeah. Oh, and we see, yeah, this Daniel is just, he's running from the Mai. He's scared. <laughs> I mean, look at, look what the heck is happening to Alex. Okay. Oh, we're seeing the ult come out as well, making sure that the Aya can survive a bit longer. Oh my god. And then, yep, Daniel's about to fall on the floor. I, I, okay, you know what? I, I feel so bad for this Aya right now because this Aya has not been able to play the game. <laughs> Every fight has been, let's go kill the Aya, and then Mai gets to play the rest of the fight. Yeah, Mai's just out here 1v2ing for fun. <laughs> Yeah, she, she single-handedly is just pushing every single team out. It's actually hilarious. I mean, I think at least to our my player, they see this, uh, they see our Aya as bait, and then we're the one that's actually carrying the fights. Oh, man. I think this headpiece upgrade is... It actually seems like pretty good tech, especially once we get our passive maxed out, because I saw that they max passive last. But once our passive is maxed out and we're doing a lot of damage from our defense as auto attacks. Oh, we're going forward, I think. Yeah, I think they're just fishing, trying to see if they can get anything. Yeah, this is a very hard fight to take, though, because we're playing, we were playing around the White Lily on the floor. And if we engage at the wrong time and then we're sent onto the other side of the map, then I don't think we can win that 1v3, sadly. If anyone can do it. Oh, yeah. Oh my god, there goes the taunt. And it looks like the health bars are just falling. We have the Mai ult coming out. Oh These guys god. just trying to auto attack the Mai. Oh, finally falls down. But I think like the damage that Mai was able to soak up and deal, just it makes this fight so easy for them to play the 2v3. Because on the other side, we only have like one and a half people's worth of health bars up yeah i mean my like again she's doing damage but she just tanked like everything and i mean i think that's the play that a lot of teams need to do is they need to really focus on uh taking down the mai uh i uh 
can kind of get focused, but this is a really unfortunate moment for a lot of teams with that third party just happening. <laughs> we have two seconds left on the Lenny, three seconds on everyone else. It's cutting it close. Oh, really good play. They know that the, there is a third party happening here, so now they're just going to try and be the, the next, the new sandwich. <laughs> Yeah, and I think this... Wait, they can't chase into the red. Whoa, Lenny, they have no timer. <laughs> Lenny almost just got taunted in. Oh my that god, they're all fighting over scary. here. They're all fighting in red, man. Oh my god. <laughs> See, I think that... Yeah, they're going to TP up to fire station because they know it's two teams left. Nothing else to worry about. Oh, stressful, dude. That's stressful. Yeah. And for a lot of people who think that... Uh, Going on to night six is a full reset of timer. It is only 40 seconds to your timer. So they might still not have enough timer to, to timer scam the enemy team here. Uh, I definitely think they do. Every, I think everyone's at 43s right now. Okay. Oh my God. The damage coming over to the sniper eye is insane. She's just falling over. And I think our Lenny also built commander's headset this game. So, Armai is doing extra damage with all of these auto attacks she's throwing out. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy. And like, I mean, like, a mo yeah, like, yeah, everyone was at pretty much around the same, like 44 seconds, but too bad. Uh, 11 here wasn't, didn't catch the memo becoming a DPS tank. And yeah, the uh, maybe, uh, maybe we see more of this tanks building a bit more offense going into the future because I think a lot of tanks have really good dive potential, but they're unable to really utilize it because they dive forward and they don't have the bonus damage to, to follow it up. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, I know it's definitely cooked here, and I mean, I genuinely think it is part of the reason why they won this game uh, that my contributed this type of value. But it's a question of like, this might only be possible when you have someone like Lenny, Charlotte, Johan, um that's like more of a supportive role and are just kind of helping you stay in the fight because my kind of just like blendered in there like she could just stay in that fight for so long and it didn't matter what kind of happened yeah i think at least for my's playing with supportive characters such as that lenny or johan then this build is it, it's very good you're able to supplement the damage that you're probably missing. And we also saw neither of her teammates wanted to go my chess pieces. So that yeah. game might have been able to go even higher in terms of damage. Yeah. Okay. Let's be fair, though. Lenny is understandable. She had Elf Dress and uh, Nimble Neuron. Please, we need our my variant of Elf Dress. Just saying. And then, I mean, I, I do think she should have went the, the chess piece for sure. Our dice just yeah. too strong. It is a very nice item, and I'm surprised that we didn't go for it, but I think each player has their own preferences. This player might just be very used to playing 100% crit rate, so even with the opportunity to go my chess piece, they just preferred not to. Oh yeah, it's 100% probably a comfort pick. Just uh, easier to go what they know and stick with it than try and go with um, Audi and figure out a different way to do it. Yeah, I think this my player... They are my main, so their understanding of their character, just knowing what items they can build, what items they should build, and what situations such as this. Like, that is what people want and should strive to reach on any character they they main. Oh, absolutely. The, the, the factor of that she did her normal routing, and then we saw her in factory finishing the craft for the tac ops, because she just knew that she was going to swap to it. it was just incredible. Like I, I thought that was great because like you, you can't do that with a premeditation of knowing that you're going to be taking this this like angle, right? Like they knew this is what they were going to do this game and started like finding all the pieces and getting that craft going. That was honestly that was a that was a game of all to watch. Uh, it was a it was such a good showing of the understanding of my and what this character has the potential to do because she could have been either more tanky that game or even tried to pump a bit more damage with some more damage items coming out but that was like picking up the the change in weapon as well so much going on with that character no absolutely 
And that's it for this one, guys. We'll see you in the next one.